Hallelujah. <laughs> good morning. Well, there's the good news and there's the bad news. The bad news, as we all know, is Stockton went bankrupt. The good news is Stockton went bankrupt. <laughs> we hit bottom. There's no place to go but up. We've gotten more press than the Super Bowl. <laughs> we have the tools to fix this place. We have those tools. And in the words of Rahm Emanuel, don't let a good crisis go to waste. <laughs> so let's reboot. Let's create Stockton 2.0. So to know where we're going... We need to know where we've been. And Stockton, of our forebears, was a wonderful community built alongside a thousand miles of waterways with museums and schools. And this building you're in right now was the northern reach of Stockton. They knew how to build a city. And we knew how to ruin one. We sold out. We had the planning we needed but it was the wrong planning. They gave us studies, RUDAT and HGHB and the ULI studies, which sat on the shelves in City Hall. We sold out. And what we did is we paved over our farmland. We gave it away, that wonderful resource, that renewable resource. And what do we plant on it? Houses. For whom? Were there jobs that were going to come to Stockton and live in these houses? Did we create an industry? Is building an industry? No. It's a part-time job. And when you're done building them, you're gone. So what happens when you sprawl? You stressed out city services. Police, fire, public works. They all have to come out there and take care of this. And so what did we end up with? The biggest foreclosure crisis in the history of the United States. That's what happened to Stockton. Big box retailing. City employees love big box retailing because it gives them a lot of tax revenue. Unfortunately, it wipes out all your friends' businesses. All the mom and pops go out. They can't compete with cheap things that are made overseas and in China. It's expensive to buy cheap. The yellow pages went from this thick to this thick. Most of our friends and neighbors lost it because we want to buy things cheap at Walmart and Target. That's what happened to Stockton. What happened to Stockton is our downtown had implementation of zoning laws that allowed residential, commercial, industrial, auto dealerships to leave the downtown. We zoned our farmland to take these businesses and move out of the central core. And what did that do? That left empty buildings in our core, our town, that our forebears built with love and, and beautiful architecture, with the greatest materials and the greatest workmanship. We left it fallow. So how bad does it have to get before it gets good? That's for us to decide. Do we want more polluted air? Do we want the second generation of suburbs and the third generation of suburbs? Or do we want a livable community, a place where we can raise our children for the next generation? In the words of Winston Churchill, we shape our buildings and afterwards our buildings shape up and us. And I say we shape our communities and afterwards our communities shape us. I think we all can agree that this planning experiment has failed. So what does a livable city need? How do we get folks back downtown again? How do we get them into the core and make our city livable again? We need commerce. We need housing. We need education. And we need the third place. And commerce can be the exchange of goods and services in a building like an SH Crest, which is in 30 states and, two and a half, 250 cities across the United States. 
They're beautiful old buildings, and you can do things with them. You can create lofts and hotels, bookstores, whatever is in your imagination, because they belong to all of us. This is our architectural heritage. And here is art in the public place, because art humanizes. It humanizes e-commerce. It softens it up. This is a law library and a legal center in downtown. Old department stores. What do you do with a J.C. Penney store? No one's shopping in J.C. Penney's anymore. All of that is leached out to the northern reaches, and even that is gone. So you put together a collaboration of contractors and builders, and you build a courtroom out of it. You build a superior court for the state of California, which provided real jobs in downtown, provided life to what was once a dead corner in downtown. Or an old Sears warehouse. These old warehouses are all over this country. This one was on the wrong side of the tracks, and it was used for drug deals and target practice. And this is what it became, a landmark in this community. And you can get these buildings because right now, interest rates are lower than they've ever been and people want to sell these buildings and they'll sell them for virtually nothing and you can rent them and you can create in them. It's for us to create. And what about housing? Where are we gonna live? Well, this is an old Elks building, and these fraternal organizations have a little bit of retail and a little bit of office, and they really don't do much. But how about this? What if we build lofts? What if we build lofts? And right now, the city of Stockton is under a settlement agreement with the state of California to build 4,000 units in the next 10 years. Where are they going to build them? How about in some of these old buildings? And right next to them, how about some new buildings? Let's infill. Let's recreate the city that our forebears built for us originally. If we build this, would you come? I think you would. And of course, we've delivered this idea to our friends at the University of the Pacific. University House. How would you like to have urban studies downtown where it all began? Living upstairs, working downstairs, take a ride on the bicycle rickshaw that's in front of you in the internet cafe. This is the future. This is what I want you all to get your hands around. And education. Education, folks. Every time I turn around, somebody has a student or teaches at the, inter at the collegiate, Stockton Collegiate School. Yeah. Don't you love that place? Well, that's at an old furniture store in downtown, and they wanted their students to be near City Hall. They wanted them to be near the library. Yeah, they wanted them to see what their city looks like. And not living on the edge somewhere, on the edge of our communities, but where activities are, where you can see one another. I came to Stockton and started restoring old buildings because I wanted to see my friends and neighbors working and go out and have coffee and talk about stuff. Their upper school, Stockton Collegiate's upper school, made as their mission statement to reintroduce their students to their history. And they moved into a National Historic Landmark, and Newsweek just named this school, having been in business less than three years, 15 out of 25 transformational schools in the country. I think we're going up on the list. I think Stockton's going up. I'm tired of being on the bottom, you know? I want to go up a little bit. And this is Team Charter, whose mission is social justice. And they are in a, in a former auto showroom, a wonderful place. And they decided to build their play area right across from the record in a difficult place in downtown, but a wonderful place in downtown. And what I want you all to know is that charter schools are working. And our educational system has not been working. So we need to look at every way to educate our children. And this is one way. And charter schools are the fastest growing industry in the United States right now. Take advantage of historic old buildings in your neighborhood because look what they can become. And then there's the third place. The third place is where we all get together. 
You know, it's the river walk. It's the cafe. It's the bookstore where we eat each other's foods and dance each other's dances and, and commiserate and talk about politics. That's the third place because I guarantee you they're not coming to Stockton to see the Walmart store. So what are our tools, folks? What are our tools to stop this inexorable move to the northern reaches of our communities? An urban growth boundary. And you tell your planners and you tell your city council folks, I want an urban growth boundary. They're going to say, well, it's an urban growth boundary. And I don't think developers are going to like this one. Because you essentially draw a planning line around your city. And you say, north, south, east, and west, we will not grow beyond them until we infill our city. We are not going to grow without a sense of place, an orderly sense of growth. It is a planning and zoning tool. And we can employ it, and it will work in Stockton because it works in Portland and cities all across the United States. And because it, there's an urban growth boundary, and you can't expand into the farmlands anymore, into the green belts, you get... Pearl District, you get a vital downtown. Another tool is inclusionary zoning. Inclusionary zoning basically says for every 50,000 square feet, let's say you build outside of the downtown, you have to build 10,000 feet in downtown. How about that one? <laughs> Why can't we build our downtown back up again? Build new buildings next to the old ones, restore the old ones, create living work special spaces. And I'll tell you this, you know, we've been making loans to bail out Wall Street. Well, why don't we bail out Main Street? You know, why don't we give loans to folks so they can have a life, so they don't have to worry about gangs, and so they don't have to worry about being cast adrift, so they can actually build something of their own. So, I need you to work with me a little bit on this one. I need you to take a little personal inventory about your satisfaction with your quality of life. So, first question. Do you feel safe? Do you feel safe if you take a stroll on a levee one night, on a summer night, and <laughs> leaving, your, leaving your door open and, and, and just feeling like uh, it's a nice thing to do? Because if you don't, stand up. Stand up. It's okay. It's okay. And you have great good places in your community, places that you can go where you can see your friends and neighbors and talk about the world because if you don't, stand up. And do you support your neighbor's business or does your neighbor even have a business? If there aren't enough in your neighborhood, stand up. And are you happy with your schools? Are, the ha are you happy with the schools you attend? Are you happy with the schools that your children attend? If you're not, stand up. Is this the city you want to leave your children? If it's not, stand up. Because this is the first move you're going to make. This is your entree into going to your city council meetings, into seeing your planning commissioners, into getting inclusionary zoning, and to get an urban growth boundary so that we don't have this crisis again. Because it's not who's president, it's who's present. Thank you.